What's happening, party people? Happy Father's Day to all of you guys out there that have children. And for God's sake, if you do not have a decent relationship with your children, man, make that a priority to get that worked out. To be honest with you, us as fathers are looked at at our children as the heroes. We are the first heroes that interact with those small people. And as they grow up, sometimes they don't agree what we suggest. We don't agree with what they want to do and we have issues. But at the end of the day, when we're all grown up, we're all mature, make an attempt to get that worked out. And man, you know, if they don't like taking their medication, I understand, but do your part in making sure that relationship is as good as possible. So there's that. I'm in Kalamazoo, getting ready to hit the road, heading to Chicago. Had a wonderful time at the Gilmore Car Show and the museum. Let me tell you something. I don't think there's a museum in the U.S. nicer than that Gilmore Museum. So if you ever have a chance to come check out that museum, even if there's not a car show, if you're a car person and you haven't done that, I, I'm hesitant to let you continue to hold that car guy car. You have got to check out that museum if your feet ever touch. And I bet you there's other nice museums in this great state of Michigan since Ford and all these other factories were here, GM and stuff. But man, it's really a nice museum. I, I bet you there's a billion dollar worth of cars in that place, man. No joke, not at all. So anyway, wrapping up for the day, today's video was of me working on the S60 down in Houston, doing the engine swap. I'll probably make this a, a video of the day, an instructional video, but I got all kinds of stuff in that clip. So thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Have a wonderful weekend. Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert. That's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Houston, Texas, Big City Lift. Here we are, folks. At the work site, we got parts that we're going to be changing seals and things on the engine. Here's the engine. And here's the S60 that it's going in. I hope it's going in. Car's locked up. We need an engine hoist to get this engine out here where we could work on it. But we don't have that yet. So we're going to see what's going to happen here in the next few minutes and get to work. Up, oh, battery's too low. You know what? It was working when we There it is. 2006 S60 engine assembly from Autos Recycler. They went to Dallas and picked this up. And hopefully it's all good. Need to get it off of this tire and crate so we can access the covers and stuff like that and start replacing seals in it. And keep it moving. Let me see if I can see the engine tag on there. The engine tag is kind of covered up. Let's see if I can spin it on this crate. There we go. Two five four T. Looks like a three, maybe. We got more parts than less, which is good. Looks like we got all the cam seal stuff we need. So I'm gonna pull the stuff off the back, lock the cams. Go up front, see if I can adjust the timing before I do that. It looks like I can get this cover off, so that's good. I should be able to move this crank 
with this on here. Had some kind of oil leak here. We'll try to get that figured out. <sighs> Fuel line is here. Thermostat's there. I don't know if we got a thermostat, but we'll look for that. We got an oil pump, which I never mess with oil pumps. These cars generally don't have oil pump problems. They have oil pan seal problems, but not oil pump problems. So let me get this cover off, time it, get the stuff off the back, start replacing these timing seal. See if we can figure out where this oil stuff was coming from. And we got, I think, the parts to do the PCV. So we'll do that as well while it's on the ground. Pull this intake manifold and do that. Sensor pickups on the back of the engine, they look the same, but they have different part numbers. The one in the exhaust, the part number ends 468. The one on the intake, that part number ends 006. So I want to keep those separate. Clean ones on the exhaust, rusty ones on the intake. Not sure if these cam seals had ever leaked. I'd rather have Volvo cam seals than aftermarket ones. But uh, they got them. I'm going to replace them. So let me go ahead and do that. So here's the difference on the back side. The intake one has a tab close to the tab. The exhaust one, it's far away. So that's the intake cam. Ends with part number 403. This exhaust cam ends with part number 402. And there's an E right before the 402. And there's an IJ right before 403. Cam differences. Let me get the locking tools and put them on there. Looks pretty straight as far as the locking tools. So those are what we call key. It should be impossible to get them mixed up. I got the cam locking tools on, the hub set. The timing may have been off a little bit on here. Let me knock this top cover on and see where this timing was on here. These hub screws are almost in the middle, so I can adjust if I need to. And I'll knock these off and get these timing parts up. I don't see any oil down there in this front crank seal, so I'm going to leave that alone and I'm not messing with no oil pump. But definitely these cam seals and these hub seals. Timing is maybe a quarter of a tooth off on both sides, so that's nothing. Can't even adjust that with the belt. Let me knock these caps out with the belt on and then pull the belt. Go from there. I think we got the wrong timing tensioner, but let me double check that real quick. Looks like both of these hubs are leaking. This intake hub seems okay. Almost no in and out play. But this exhaust hub, it has a lot of in and out play. That will need to be replaced, likely, or it'll leak. Let me go ahead and mark them and break them free. Cam seals are in. Because these have VVT hubs, you can't recess these in. They need to be kind of flush with the outer ring of the engine so that the VVT hubs will catch on the seal in there. So let me go ahead and get this water pump off, get this idler off. Get that out of the way. He actually has new timing parts on the other car engine. It'd been nice to use that stuff and not uh, use all this brand new stuff. But let me take a peek over there and see what's going on. That stuff's less than a year old over there. Uh-oh. The first sign of a bad engine. Rust. That means somebody was probably running water, which means they were probably playing coolant roulette. 20 25 percent chance that they probably overheated this engine at some point probably got a blown head gasket but it's a volvo pump look at them two little spots i gotta clean off winning i don't see any evidence that this cover is too warped it's got look like some melted maybe damaged air that's a sign of overheating this side of the cover doesn't look too bad. It's got a chip missing there, which I did find down here. So I might try to epoxy that on or switch the other one over here. Since I can't really get the belt off with the engine sitting in this wheel, so till the engine hoist comes. But the other cover, 
was warped not too bad so maybe it wasn't overheated or wasn't overheated bad at any point so we might be okay no real overheat evidence there this is warped but these are always kind of warped and jacked up these covers suck in my opinion something eating up down there could just be oil so let me get that cleaned up get the water pump on kill that hornet get that idler on get ready for the rest of the belt stuff let me clean this off let me tell you guys a story of the engine that could it was once upon a time a nice Volvo, very well maintained, driven not too hard, not too much, had about 90,000 miles on it, and as the driver was entering an intersection, they did see and verify that they had a green light, and to their surprise, as they were finishing reading that text they had, Somebody ran a light. Now, had they been paying attention, they might have seen that coming and avoided it. But at this point, there was no avoiding it. That car smashed the front end of their car, spun them around. The driver was stunned. That car drifted to a stop. And then the shock, they just sat there waiting for a couple of seconds, making sure everything was okay. The car still seemed to be running okay. Everybody around them came to a stop. Somebody approached the car, asked them was they okay. They said, yeah, they seem to be okay. While the car sitting there idling, they called for emergency help. It was hot out. They're sitting in the car with the car idling, but that collision breached the coolant system. The car lost all its coolant. They're talking on the phone, and then all of a sudden, the car stalls. Car stalls out and dies. They get out of the car, walk to safety, waiting for their help to come. That's the end of the day. Now, what they don't know is, and what they don't realize is, because they didn't turn the car off, immediately when the accident happened and all the coolant left the engine the car overheated it overheated enough to stall they wasn't paying attention to the cluster they didn't see the low coolant light come on they didn't see the shed engine off immediately come on they were on the phone looking around what's going on outside the car and when it stalls all the warning lights come on you don't see those messages Anyway, that car is hauled off, ends up in a salvage yard or somewhere, and for some reason, the engine was still start, even though it had a blown head gasket. Head gasket wasn't blown too bad, but it's bad enough that it's gonna have problems keeping coolant. So here someone comes along, they need an engine for their car, they purchase that engine, and the rest is history. They pay somebody to put that engine in the car, but it's got a blown head, so it won't keep coolant. They end up having to replace the engine again or having the cylinder head rebuilt. Or they may bail on their car because they just absorb an expensive repair and they can't afford to have that done again. So be aware of cars that, oh, this car was running when we pulled the engine out because it may have a blown head especially when somebody's been running water in the coolant system and there's rust in the engine scary thing so there you have it hopefully you don't experience the same thing as other people hopefully this engine hadn't experienced that but we'll find out hopefully tomorrow morning catch you later at the wheel off we're gonna pull this axle so i'm gonna unplug this abs wire probably undo the sway bar link See there it needs a control arm. The control arm is torn through the bushing. We got oil over here. I have no idea how there's this glob of grease and oil in there. Anyway, I'm gonna take this strut loose so this could fall down away from there and get this axle out. 
let me keep moving forward getting this axle removed like we got a CV axle throwing grease out here. That control arm is worn out. This is missing the metal guard there. This engine mount here is totally blown. It's too blown for me to even get the bolts out of there without lifting this up. So, I'm gonna keep moving forward. Got the canopy up. Got the car moved out of the way. Got the coolant drained. Time to start taking some stuff loose from the engine. Getting this thing ready to jerk out the top. I got the bar across the top out. I'm gonna lift it up a little bit a little before I could get this front engine mount loose. But I do need to get this power steering pump taken loose from the engine. I'm gonna try to leave that thing there, connect it and not drain it. We'll see what happens. Guess I should disconnect the battery before I do anything else, but you can see all the timing components was replaced. INA timing belt kit. Liquid Molly was installed. It had 170 at the time. So let's go see where we're at on mileage and then disconnect the battery. 181. Only 10,000 miles on that timing stuff. Unplug the fan. Undid the two zip ties, holding the wire harness, pulled the coolant hose off of the top of the fan trot, unhooked the wire harness over here from the fan trot. Now I'm gonna lift the fan trot up and out of the way. Came to the back, lifted the floor up, undid the ground on the battery. Next, I'm gonna take this turbo tube out there. There's a seven millimeter down there. And there should be a seven millimeter around here somewhere. Take this turbo tube loose. Get it out of the way. Then I'm going to pull these vacuum tubes off of this pipe. And unplug any sensor on that turbo tube. Heck, I don't see any sensors on this one. So then after that, I'm going to remove the starter. Take the bolts out of the starter. Take the wires off the other side of the starter and pull the starter out of the way. Trying to find the nut on this clamp. It's a big secret for some reason. Sometimes it's back there. Maybe that's it. Let me put a screw in there. See if I can undo that. Sometimes it's down there. Yep, there it is. Let me put a socket on there and undo that. Got my tool on it, reached under there. After I pulled this vacuum hose off of here, got it out. Now I'm gonna take this vacuum loose from this valve right here and pull it out. I'm gonna leave it on the tube right there. Pull it out with the tube. Next, I'm gonna pull the cover off of the engine and I might set the timing, might not, but I'm gonna put rags in these holes your intercooler holes your radiator holes your coolant hose your charge pipe holes then I'm going to unplug all of the electrical I'm going to unplug all the wires from all the fuel injectors unplug the wire from the fuel rail unplug the connectors from both cam sensors front and back unbolt this wire harness from the engine Get everything that I can reach off the engine. I'm probably gonna pull this vacuum hose, that vacuum hose, so that I can have clearer access to the bolts that go around the engine. And I'm gonna unplug this from here so I don't break it moving stuff around. You squeeze this top and bottom like that and massage it off. So let me use two hands to do that. Got the starter out, had a 13 on it, and the little solenoid wire had a cap on there that I turned off by hand and a 10 millimeter bolt on the wire to keep it secure. Unplugged the wire harness from the ETM, 
I took the bolt off the back of the alternator, which was a 13. I unplugged that sense wire from there. I thought I unplugged the AC compressor, but it looked like the plug came apart there. So unplug the knock sensors from down there somewhere and figure out what else I gotta unplug to lift the engine up and leave the wire on the steel. I see the oil sensor plug right there and one of these clamps is bolted to the engine so I'll pull that out. I'm leaving a wire harness in the car. Here's the lock sensor that should have a plug somewhere. If not, I'll unplug it from the lock sensors. It's way down there. Lock sensor plug is way down there. So, let me get the rest of this stuff unplugged and give you another update. The bolts around the transmission appear to be 13s. I'm going to take that bolt out there. It looks like a 14 probably a 15 but we'll see i took the turbo intake tube off because this wire harness was hooked around it i wasn't going to be able to lift it out so i pulled that and i took the lower radiator hose out giving me better access to these other bolts and stuff let's keep rolling man there's a lot of oil up here for this car i have have a pcv job recently and oil cap seal is pliable a little bit of a mess this wire harness came around and plugged in of course to these cam sensors plugged into the turbo control valve plugged in down there to the intake tube then down here the harness screws in the front of the mount with the eight millimeter and i took the 15 millimeter off the top so i should have everything loose off the front, I got the power steering stuff loose, 12 millimeter studio. I'm not gonna breach that. I'm not gonna breach the AC. It looks like I got a couple of tens, uh, three tens, maybe four on the front of the AC compressor. I'm gonna take those loose, push that over toward the engine. I guess I don't need to take that wire loose since it's just there with the car. But anyway, next I'm going to take that AC compressor loose then hit these flywheel bolts and then hit the bolts going all the way around the engine then I'll take the heater pipes loose you just twist them and pull them off or you release these uh, spring loaded things and pull them off spread these open pull those off then I'm going to take the mount loose in the back and I'm going to take the heat shield off and take the down pipe loose and it is lunchtime. Shout out to my boy, Jason. Yes, sir. There it is, Jason. Got lunch. Trying to get the downpipe loose, and I got two of those 10 millimeters stuck so bad. I hit one of them with my impact gun, Danny there, and I didn't have an impact socket. It broke that socket. Heck, it might have broke two sockets. Uh, this one didn't break. It just flared it a little bit and stripped it out. But anyway, I put a six-point Craftsman on there. It broke it. I need to find my impact socket number 10. Besides that, I got to let it sit with PB Blaster. Hopefully, I get it loose. I got the bottom one loose, but not the top two. So, we are going to assemble this one-ton Pittsburgh foldable shop crane I call it an engine hoist they call it a shop crane these are the measurements for the bolts so when you put it together and those are the instructions we got a few of the parts out here so we're going to put this thing together like a boss we're going to start by finding this piece here and attaching two casters to it the casters that have the brakes on there so let us grab that and show you how that's done so that's the piece there. We're going to attach these casters to it. We got a nut, a washer, and the bolt. The bolt is 6A, wherever that is. I don't see. Oh, there it is, 6A. We're going to find these little bolts and the washers and the nuts for them and attach them inside the, the tunnel down there. 
there it is. They came with the washer and nuts on there. We should have eight of them. We're going to attach these to that. That's how you size them up. Make sure you got the right size. Do, 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 do. So you got some that's flathead. They go on the other casters. And these old heads go on these pivoting casters we have. So my fingers are too short to reach down there. So what I did was lined it up, push the bolt through it, and I got my magnet out, picked up my washer and my nut. You could do one at a time, it's probably better. Take your washer, fish it down in there, hook it on the bolt. Hope oh, my bolt fell out. He's gonna slide the bolt back up under there since I'm working with one hand. Hook the washer on there. I don't think that's gonna be that hard. <laughs> Fishing it on there. And pull your washer off. Then you put your nut on your magnet, set it over there, and turn the Nut from the bottom, get it started. Yep, it's going. And now it's started. Now you reach tool in there, hold the tool in there and tighten it from the bottom. And you get all four in. You can also reach down in there with needle nose pliers or whatever you got to get those washer nuts on there. Get that job done. Make sure you put the correct casters on the proper position. I think they're spaced different. And while we were going through this process, we couldn't find one of the nuts and found it down in this tube. It perfectly fit down in that tube. I had to fish it out with my magnet there. All right, we got all the casters in. These are different size from the ones on the arm extenders. I'm not sure if the bolt pattern's the same, but, the smaller one goes on there, the larger ones go on here. Now we're ready to bolt the support onto here. And we got two bolts like that, two bolts like this, two bolts like this, and two mismatch bolts. So these seem to be the second largest bolts. I'm gonna bolt them through here with that arm. So let me lift that up there and bolt that on with some help. The big boys don't fit through there. So it's going to be these. They win. These two big bolts that are the same go in the bottom of your little red pivoting arms. And one of these big bolts go in the top of the pivoting arm. The other big bolt goes in the top of the ram. So let's raise these pivoting arms up and put those together we ended up with a larger bolt down here smaller bolt up here we got to snug that one down we tighten those bolts down there tighten these two bolts here this bolt really doesn't get tightened because it's a pivoting bolt neither does these two because they're pivoting but they need to be snug and then far enough so they don't fall out and you could watch them as long as they don't fall out while you're operating the lift you'll be fine don't be scared. Got the engine hoist together. It seems to be working very well. Shout out to Pittsburgh. Now, the last thing I think I need to do is get these bolts out of this exhaust downpipe. Then get this front engine mount loose, even though it's busted. I got to raise the engine up just to get those two bolts out. The transmission is already falling away from the engine. Cause I took all of those bolts out. So I hate to break these bolts, but I don't have all day. The good thing is that thing has a turbo exhaust and everything on it. So if that stuff is good, I'm good. And the holes in that's clear. So if I break those bolts, I just need to go find a couple of bolts to put in there. Thread pitch was not, but one came out. I'm fighting with the other two. Okay, we are coming up. I took the AC compressor loose, 
Got the power steering loose. I removed the alternator so the power steering would have space to fall down there. And we're hooked up. We got that engine mount loose. We should be coming loose from the transmission. I might have to pry that apart a little bit. We got the coolant lines loose. We got the exhaust loose. Man, Manny, my band Manny saved the day on that. Got those two bolts out with, hey, where'd my tool go? Let me show you the tool I used to get that off of there. Where's Henry? Here it is. That impact 10 swivel right there. That and Danny popped those loose. Took a little bit, but they came loose. I thought I was going to have to use some heat. I should have done better having all these accessories off. I didn't go under the bracket like that. I tried to go through the hook. Snap the guy's dang bracket off. So that's going to be fun. Going to the salvage yard, getting another one of those. Whole thing off the front. Got to take all the accessories off to get to it. Anyway, we're going to try it the right way and keep lifting the engine up. We got the fuel line disconnected and everything else done. We just need to try to scoot the engine over. That's what I was doing when it snapped. I was pulling the engine over toward the passenger side and the bracket snapped. For some reason, my torque converter was stuck to my engine. As you can see, it's leaking there, so it did come out of the transmission. I need to put something under there to start catching that fluid. Then I made sure it was loose, had to lower the engine back down, and I got it loose and pried it away from the transmission and broke the crank sensor off. But the other engine has a good one. So the only part we need so far from the salvage yard is this bracket here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts. So let me get this out of here, set it on the ground, take the time of parts off of it that we're going to use and go from there we're replacing this engine because it ran extremely low on oil and it started knocking you could actually hear it making noise when i roll it over on the inside oh i don't hear it now when I first started rolling over, you can hear it knocking a little bit. I'm trying to set the timing so I can take the parts off of here. Make sure this hub is good because the hub on the other car is not good. Heck, I don't even know if I can get that loose. Well, I can do it with an impact gun. I think here's where it's making noise. I can hear the noise again. Well, my time had set, so I'm going to stop there. Much better situation, pretty much. All right, let's see if I can get this hub off without any timing crap on the back, locking it down. So I'm going to tuck the engine up front for now, kind of hide it, because this is going to be overnight. I got to go get a bracket in the morning. But here we are, and... They put all new timing stuff on there 10,000 miles ago, so we could use all that. Just need a new gasket, which I believe we have. They... So, I'm going to use the other one. I'm not going to use this one. May have more play in it. But... They did a new PCV. The guy was told they used all the best parts. The fact that he had to put a zip tie on there told me it wasn't. And then I looked down there, and it's Pro Part Sweden, which is, in my opinion, junk. Now, the other one has the original system on there, so that's probably clogged. But I'm not going to take it off to put this junk on. So that's that. Let me go ahead and spin this engine around, set it there, which hopefully will be out of my way and then work my way through here and get that engine on this hoist and get it over here and get it installed and tested, tested and installed. One of those things. Whoop, whoop. That's it, folks. We're wrapping for tonight. We are 
calling it at 7.30. Comfort in West Chase, Houston, Texas. Room feels comfortable. Man, the odors in this place is amazing. We walked in the hotel. The front desk smelled kind of like potpourri-ish. Wasn't too overbearing. Smelled nice. Got out of the elevator and the hall smelled like roast beef. Like somebody cooking a roast. I was looking for grandma's roast beef. Walk in the room, it smells a little, little hint of potpourri -ish. Everything looks clean. I'm going to hit the shower and make a couple of videos because I am behind on video making. And I don't have any time. This is all the time I got. So let me check for my insects and call it a night. I think I'm good to go. Hit the shower. Well, that's it for this video. I will do some more. I actually finish that up on the next video. So thanks for watching. Have a blessed Father's Day and have a great rest of your weekend. Thanks for watching.